All right. You're listening to the AAR podcast. My name is Russ, and uh, this week I'll be talking to you about a couple movies I went to see. The Mummy, It Comes at Night, and Rough Night. Um, I'll start everything off by talking about The Mummy, which I saw earlier this week. Um, It's been getting tons of bad reviews. I'm not really sure why. Um, It's a pretty fun movie. It's not a great movie. It's definitely popcorn, summer stuff. Um, If you're a fan of Tom Cruise, you'll like it. You'll enjoy it. Uh, It's nice to see some of the special effects were actually real effects. I guess they built a city, a bunch of the buildings that uh, during a chase scene were actually real, which is kind of neat to see and didn't look fake at all. Um, They also did some of the plane stuff you see in the trailers when they're in there in the airplane and he passes the parachute to the girl that's actually filmed in an actual airplane that's doing like a nosedive to create zero gravity. So that was pretty cool. Um, So I don't really know why there's tons of hate about it. Um, It's a very typical, you know, summer cheesy movie. I wouldn't say it was bad. I didn't hate it. I probably wouldn't watch it again, at least not at the movies. I might watch it if it was on TV. <clears throat> it does borrow from a lot of films uh, for a movie trying not to remind people that there was a whole series of mummy movies before it. It definitely borrows from it a lot. I feel like there's a sandstorm thing in the original series. Uh, there's like a thing from one of the trailers where like you see her the new mummy's face made out of like sand. I feel like in the original, well not not the originals, but in the Brendan Fraser movies, they fly a plane through the mummy's face that's made out of sand. Kind of similar. Doesn't really make sense for when you're trying to reboot a series to do a lot of stuff like that. Um, This mummy though has a lot of stuff that doesn't really make too much sense plot-wise, but, I mean, it's called The Mummy. It's about a mummy. You know, I don't really know why people would be expecting too much uh, realism. Um, But it's a weird movie because there's no real set tone. It's not really horror. It's not really funny. I think the people who made it really, really like um, An American Werewolf in London uh, because... uh, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm going to try not to spoil anything. If I do, we'll get into spoilers later. But there's quite a bit of stuff borrowed from that, tonal-wise and scene-wise and character-wise. There's a lot of stuff from there. Um, I think some of the stuff I've been reading about the complaints really tend to be it's Tom Cruise's movie, but he's not the mummy. But, like, he's the object of affection of the mummy. And, like, he's basically going to be this, like, um, he's very pivotal to what the mummy wants to do. Um, I guess I can't really talk too much about it without getting into spoilers. So, I will get into spoilers. If you don't want any spoilers, now would be the time to turn it off, I guess. Um, All right. So, Tom Cruise is going to be the pivotal part of the new Universal Monster series, which is set in this thing called the Dark Universe or the Dark World or something. Very, very clever. Um, Where they bring back all the old Universal Monsters. So we've got the Mummy now. They tried doing it with Dracula a while ago, but I guess that doesn't count. They're going to reboot that. Um, They posted a picture of the casts, which gave us uh, The Mummy. We also got Dr. Jekyll. We have The Invisible Man. And we have Frankenstein, but not the Doctor. We have the monster. So we have Frankenstein's monster, who's going to be in The Bride of Frankenstein, which is the movie they're going to make, which is really weird because we're not going to be introduced to Frank, like the, the monster or the Doctor, but we're going to see a movie called The Bride of Frankenstein. I don't know. It doesn't really make too much sense either. I think they're kind of just throwing stuff together to try and make some money and really get in a bunch of stuff for next summer 
to compete with like the Star Wars and the Marvel and the DC franchises because I'm not sure Universal has really anything right now that's doing it. Um, anyway, I'll talk about the Mummy some more. Um, the Mummy in this movie is female, which is a little different from the original. It's uh, an actress, Sophia Batella. She actually, you may have seen her in uh, The Kingsman, which is a great movie. She plays like the hitman type with like the fake legs who works for Samuel Jackson. Um, she's also in Star Trek, but she's covered in white makeup, so you really don't know that it's her that you're seeing. Um, she plays like the main alien that helps out Kirk a lot. Uh, honestly, I think she's all right in it. I don't really have problems with her. She doesn't have much to do. Um, if anything, I think she's probably, like watching the movie, she was probably the only person really giving it their all acting-wise. Like You actually feel a little bit bad for her character sometimes because she kind of gets screwed over plot-wise. Like She was going to become a pharaoh and then something happened, so she got mad and killed a bunch of people. And then they locked her up alive, and so she becomes the mummy um, years later. Um, I don't know, it, it's a weird movie because it's not really, I wouldn't say it's good, you know, it's just an okay movie. Um, you also have the girl from the trailers, uh, Annabella Wallace, um, you may recognize her from one of the X-Men movies, I think Professor Xavier hits on her in a bar, um, she's in some other, other series, you, like, I think she's British, so she's in a lot of, like, BBC stuff. Um, Nick Miller. Jake Johnson, I think is his real name, but I'll always refer to him as Nick Miller. Uh, he's supposed to kind of be like the comic relief in this movie. He's Nick Miller, you know, he'll always be Nick Miller. I feel like he, was, he probably was trying to not play Nick Miller in this, but Tom Cruise was like, listen, you're going to be this character. Make, make it funny, you know. Um, Tom Cruise was Tom Cruise. You know, this could have been, like, The Mummy Impossible, basically. Um, just lots of stunts, lots of Tom Cruise being Tom Cruise. You know, jumping, fighting, doing his thing. Uh, Russell Crowe plays Dr. Jekyll, if you haven't paid attention to the trailers. Obviously, if you don't know who Dr. Jekyll is... Um, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Read a book from 6th grade because uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. We do get to see Hyde. It's really cheesy. He just, um, he kind of gets a little veiny. He doesn't really grow much. And then he's, he gets a real cheesy, like, Cockney accent and uh, becomes real street. But he tries to join forces with Tom Cruise, which is weird, too. I don't know. So one of the things that I'll probably spoil... But it's not really a spoiler. I think it's more of my interpretation of things. Is The fact that we have a casting photo of the Dark Universe with the Invisible Man, Frankenstein's Monster, the Mummy, the Invisible Man, oh, which is Johnny Depp is going to be the Invisible Man. So we've got them four, and then you have Tom Cruise. And I'm pretty sure Tom Cruise is going to be the Wolfman. It's hinted at. They don't really say it. They show a lot of, like, the Egyptian god that looks... I don't know if he's a jackal or a dog or whatever he is. But they show a lot of that towards the end. Because uh, he gets... He basically has, like, immortal powers because he's cursed. They keep saying, calling it a curse, how he has his powers. It's really on the nose, but it's also, like... Unless you know, you know what I mean, that the wolfman's cursed, you may not catch it. Um, I thought that was kind of neat. And I kind of like to see him be in the Wolfman movie. Um, past couple versions of like the Wolfman, they weren't great. They weren't bad, but they weren't great either. Um, but I guess he's going to be in all the movies, and they're all going to tie in together. So expect like Avenger esque, like like monster movies that aren't really scary. I don't really understand the whole deal. Um, like the monsters are going to be heroes, or they're going to be bad guys, or something. It's really weird. It's really vague. Um, so I don't know. But I mean, I didn't. I did not enjoy it. So I guess I would tell you to go see it. 
if you like Tom Cruise or Nick Miller or like monster movies that aren't really scary, uh, there's a lot of CGI like uh, mummies and like like zombie type mummy things. Um, you see them in the trailers. The studs are pretty cool. Knowing that a lot of them are live action, you know, and not CGI is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'd say go see it. Maybe don't see it at night. Go see a matinee. Don't rush out to see it. Don't waste your money on 3D version. It's not worth it. Um, I watched it in 3D. It was my only option. I really didn't see much of anything that was 3D. Maybe the birds that smashed through the window in the trailer. Maybe some like flecks of ash during fire or sand and stuff. But uh, this wasn't like Lord of the Rings 3D. This wasn't anything of any noticeable. I can't remember anything. Like, I don't remember why it's in 3D at all. So, yeah, go see it if that's your kind of thing. But um, save your money if it's not, because it's really not that great of a film. Um, I hope they do more stuff with the, this whole idea. Like, I like the idea of the Dark Universe. I really do. Uh, I'm just worried about how they're going to pull it off. They have talented actors playing these parts. But like with the DC Universe, if you don't have a team of people who are 100% behind it, you're really not going to get a high quality film. Um, but they put a lot of money into this Mummy movie. I don't know if it's Tom Cruise's vanity or what, but um, it's definitely a forgettable movie. Honestly, I kind of want to go watch the Brendan Fraser ones now. and just I feel like the first one was great. Like I feel like it was fun and, and exciting. And it was like, it made you feel like a kid when you were watching the old Mummy movies, you know, like you would watch on Saturday on Channel 56. Uh, but this one doesn't really have that. This one's very throwaway blockbuster movie. So, yeah, I don't know. I saw a couple movies this week, so busy guy. All right, so that's about enough about The Mummy. Um, next I'll talk about It Comes at Night. Uh, I, I didn't watch any trailers for this. Um, I was told that it's a horror movie. I saw a bunch of things about it being a horror movie. It's a very independent film. I think the cast may have less than 10 people in it. It's essentially about a family that lives in the woods after a, a post-apocalyptic plague has hit. People get sick. It's an airborne virus, I believe. They don't really say what it is. Um, they kind of show it in the beginning, like a family member's sick, like right away. So you kind of see them uh, take care of it. To tell, It basically tells you. There's no real narration about it. There's no, you know, three years ago, a bomb dropped. There's nothing like that. It's literally, boom, this family's in a big house. And the house is beautiful. I don't, I, I don't know how they, they live there. They, the, the main character said he was a, a teacher. This house is like a million dollar home easily. It's like a lodge in the middle of the woods. Like, I don't know if there's a lake. I think there was maybe, I don't know. But it's a huge house. I mean, there's no way a teacher bought this house. But, so you think they're squatters, but they have family pictures all over the house. So, I don't know. There's a lot of things that didn't make sense in this movie. Um, so, it's really, it didn't make sense, a lot of it. Um, right away, you're introduced to the plague. They're all wearing gas masks and like gloves and all this stuff, and then they dispose of like a family member who has the, got the plague, and they burn him, which doesn't make sense to me on two levels because one, I feel like when you burn things, it goes in the air and then the rain catches it and it comes down and it spreads. Maybe it's because I watched all the Return of the Living Dead movies when I was a kid. But you never want to burn zombies, in my opinion, ever. Two, if you're hiding out from people and you don't want people to know who you are or to break into your house, you don't have fires. Like, you don't set big bonfires to burn bodies. It didn't make sense to me at all. And then either that night or the next day, you know, this is, the story begins because someone comes to the house. They never say they saw the fire or anything. But, you know what I mean? Like, it's clear that the fire is what brought them to the house. Like, if you have a cabin in the middle of the woods, no one's going to walk to your house. Like, it didn't, like, 
a lot of it just didn't make any sense. Like they were just in the middle of nowhere, but there were people everywhere. Well, there wasn't a lot of people, but which made it even weirder. Like, did everyone who ran from the cities go to the same like acre of woods? Like I didn't, it wasn't really like a feasible or like movie. Like I get it, what they were doing. And I, I, I think it may have even won awards. It's a really good character study. The actors are good in it. Um, but I mean, if you're looking to be scared, this isn't gonna scare you. If you're looking for one or two maybe jump scenes, you might get them. Um, if you're looking for something deep, like, um, what was that movie recently, that horror movie that everyone loves? Um, I can't remember what it was called. But uh, this isn't that. <laughs> it's just, it's total filler. Um, I can't even really talk too much about it. It wasn't great. Uh, they were just, it didn't make sense to me. Like, this guy is doing everything to protect their family. They've got, the windows are sealed and they have like plastic tarps over things so that air doesn't get in anywhere. But then they don't have any traps out in their yards. You know, they don't have like barbed wire or like, they don't cover up their driveway and, and they're burning bodies. And it, it just felt so stupid. Like, the guy must be educated if he's, te he's a teacher of something. I think he said history. I think he said he was a teacher of history, which makes it even worse. Because I feel like if you teach history, you should know about at least about like wars and like basic like battle type things and how to like fortify a house or something, you know, like surround yourselves on all sides with like natural things so people can't come and get you, you know, like have a lake or mountains, things like that. But um, it was weird. So this guy breaks into their house and, you know, he's got a family and stuff. You can, if you see the trailers, I'm not really spoiling anything. So they, he, you know, they test him out. They make sure he's not sick. They go get his family. They bring the family here. And it's weird, like, the dude has his rules, and he's like, you got to follow my rules. So then you're like, all right, maybe it's going to get weird when the family comes. Like, because you were, like, halfway through this movie, and the family just gets there, and really nothing's happening still. And you're just like, so what comes at night? Like, I'm waiting. Like, I'm waiting for things to, like, bang on the windows or, like, something. And, the like, nothing's happening. And... And finally, like, the family's been there a little while, and, you know, they show, like, oh, look, they're bonding, they're cutting wood. And then the dog runs off and chases something. We never know what it is. Dog just disappears, runs into the woods, can't figure it out. Dog's gone. Whatever. So, the kid's sad because it's his dog. Whatever. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they, they talk about it a little bit, and, you know, it's like a dog, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that night, um, the main kid in the family, he wakes up because he hears someone in the house. And it's the dog. <sighs> and it doesn't make sense. Like, So then you, they figure out that it was like the, uh, the new family's little kid gets accused of letting the dog in. Now, if you've seen this door, the front door... And then, the, like, all the, the doors they have so that no one can get into this house because there's, like, an antechamber, like, an airlock-type system going on. Now they're trying to say that this little, like, kid who sleepwalks and opens these doors to let the dog in. And then when you see the dog, the dog's, like, torn apart, like, blood everywhere, and it's, it's gross. So... Did the kid let the dog in all gross like that? Like... It just doesn't make any sense. And then apparently the dog gets this, like starts a whole like cycle of people getting sick. And I it just didn't make any sense because all I could think of was like, did someone put the dog there? There's no, like it just did not make sense this movie at all. Um, and it wasn't scary. Like it's not a horror movie. It's not a, you know, 30 days a night. Um, it's not very suspenseful. It literally was just like, hmm, all right, you know, I mean, what's his name? Joel Egerton, 
who I always think is Joel from uh, Mystery Science Theater, but he's not. And then I see him and I go, oh, it's Uncle Owen from the Star Wars movies that I try not to talk about. Um, yeah, you know what? He looks intense. He's got a beard. He's the dad and he's like a survivalist or whatever. And he's doing his best to protect his family, but he's not really good at it. It's really weird. I don't know. Like, you almost kind of don't care that they die because, like, I don't know. It's just not good. I don't even want to talk about it, really. It's like, it's that, that not good. Like, I don't even know. So I guess I'll just end it with that. I mean, listen, if the world ends, fortify wherever you stay, traps, you know, cover up your trails. If you're, if you live in a house far off the grid, make it so no one knows how to get to your house. Maybe put a gate. You know, chain up the gate, cover it with stuff so it looks like no one's opened the gate in years, that kind of thing. Booby traps, you know, like Data says, booby traps. Set them up. Don't let anyone come to your house because uh, they're going to follow you if you if you have fires in your yard because they're going to see smoke, especially when there's no power plants. They're going to see smoke in the sky and be like, there's people there. We're going to rob them. We're going to kill them or something. Um, yeah, it's really stupid. So, all right. I guess the last movie I'll talk about, I just saw this morning, was uh, Rough Night. This movie was definitely not made for me. Um, I'm not their demographic. But it was still all right. It was okay. It's not great. It's another one of those comedies that aren't really, really funny, that have some funny things in it. Um... I'd put it on the same level as, like, the new Ghostbusters or I'm trying to think of some other new movies that I've seen lately that just, like, weren't great, had a couple jokes, um, things like that. Uh, Jillian Bell is in it. Um, way funnier in uh, Teacher Fight, hilarious in Teacher Fight. I feel like they tried to make her character a little bit sympathetic in this, and it didn't really work. Um... One good thing I noticed in it was uh, there's a bunch of young uh, comedians, like the, the Broad City crew is in there, some of the writers from The Daily Show. I noticed that uh, Hassan Minhaj, I think, how do you say, it, say his name? Um, he was in it. He, uh, he's he got a special on Netflix that's pretty funny. I watched it the other day. So it was, it was nice to see him. Um, that YouTube comedian that everyone likes who uh, got famous by writing, like, songs and he's, like, attractive, Bo Burnham or something, he's in it. Like, it's really – all the men in this movie, like, are, like, young comedians and the women are, like – the women are the stars. But, like, the men are, like, kind of, like, the the sub-story or the backstory or something. You know what I mean? Like, they're the bachelor party and it's, like, a joke because they do very, like – like, you know, they go to wine testing and stuff, and it's very un-cliché manly type things. And um, I honestly, I laughed at a lot more of their scenes than I did the um, the Bachelorette scenes. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's an okay movie. Like I said, I, it's not my demographic. Um, there's some weird kind of creepiness with um, that guy from Modern Family, that's in the detergent commercials. He's the next door neighbor and his girlfriend or wife is Demi Moore, who looks extremely weird from, I think, plastic surgery. Her face looks weird. It, it's like, it's very odd. It, it, it unsettled me almost. Um, and they're like a weird, like swinging couple and they try to hook up with like the bachelorette people. And I, I didn't really find a lot of it funny. Um, but uh, they did reference the astronaut woman who wore the diapers and drove like halfway across country. And they kept calling it the sad astronaut. And I thought that was hilarious. And there's a whole scene where they go and buy like uh, adult diapers, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It wasn't that great either. Uh, this week has not been the greatest week for movies for me. Uh, I did watch... Um, I'll talk about it after. I can put. I can talk about it for a second too before I go. Um, one good thing. Um, 
apparently when two ridiculously beautiful people have a child, um, their child is ridiculously um, beautiful. Uh, Lenny Kravitz and Lisa Bernays' daughter is in this, Zoe Kravitz, and uh, she's gorgeous. I don't know if she's a great actress or not yet. Um, I was looking up some of the roles she's had, and um, they weren't really great roles. That She didn't really have much to do. Um, yeah, I don't know. I really, there isn't even much to say. Even Scarlett Johansson felt like she was along the ride for like a paycheck. Um, I, I don't know. Um, I forget the woman's name from Broad City. I feel like it's like Ilana or something. She was pretty funny in it. Um, but it, it, like I said, it wasn't very great. You know, it wasn't like Weekend at Bernie's or I don't even know if I would compare it to that. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I was talking about a movie the other day where every scene without the main character was funnier than with the main character, and people got upset with me about it. But this was kind of the case. Like, plot-wise, it's clear from the beginning that, spoiler alert, the stripper is not really a stripper. It's super obvious. Um, and you know the stripper is eventually going to show up and be a twist or something. It was good to see the, the, who the real stripper was because it's Roy from um, Arrow and all those shows, and he's done a bunch of things. I think it was in Teen Wolf, too. Um, so that was nice to see him on in, like, a movie. <coughs> um, but it wasn't, I don't know, it just wasn't a great movie. It wasn't, I think I laughed out loud a couple times, and it was always, like, laughing at the bachelor party and the bachelors because... I mean, they're like writers and comedians who you recognize immediately. You're like, that guy writes for this, this guy writes for this, this guy writes for this. They may have, I have a feeling they had something to do with the movie, like the Broad City crew. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't know if I'd recommend it either. Like I said, it's not my demographic. I mean, it wasn't for me. Um, so, I mean, that may be why I didn't get it or appreciate a lot of the jokes. I did think that there's a run on joke about needing a tampon. I thought it was pretty funny and clever and I feel like people really do use that. So, um, so that was good, but all in all, it's another, I mean, maybe go see it. Maybe not. We'll see what else comes out this week. Um, yeah, I don't know. So I guess, yeah, that was rough night. It was, um, Oh, and it was also weird. It was like, it's opening day, and it's just me and like another guy in the theater. I was expecting like lots of women. When I walked in, I saw two women drinking at the bar because our theater has a bar. And I was like, oh, I bet those ladies are going to go see Rough Night, you know, because they're like pre gaming at the bar. Nope. I don't know what they went to see, but it wasn't Rough Night. And uh, I feel like Rough Night needs support from the ladies, just like Wonder Woman does. Because, I mean, you want to support. Yeah, it was a female-directed film, and I imagine it was... I have a feeling it was written by the director or the the actress from Broad City, because I think she's, like, the main brains behind the Broad City show. Um, if you haven't watched it, I think it's on Comedy Central. It's pretty funny. It's a good show. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. We have to support these movies so they keep getting made. Um... All right, so and last night, I wasn't going to talk about it. I didn't even take notes or anything, but I watched T2, not to be confused with Terminator 2, but Train Spotting 2. Um, this is an, a movie that didn't, I don't think it really need to be made. Uh, a long time ago, they wrote the book. I think it was called Porno or something. Um, and it's basically 20 years later, Mark comes back to Scotland you know, his life kind of has something going on. And we basically pick up where the characters of Train Spotting left off. It's a little interesting. It's very predictable. You know, you kind of imagine these characters would end up exactly where they end up. Uh, plot wise, there isn't too much going on. But honestly, the original didn't have much going on either. I mean, it's a great movie. Visually, it was amazing. This one does a lot of really cool visual stuff that like if you're not paying attention you won't notice like it really plays on maybe it's because of my age you know but it pulls on and plays with your emotions on how you are when you're 
in your 40s versus when you're in your 20s because it's really a comparable thing. Um, there's some cool stuff with like shadows of people not being there. There's a lot of like characters remembering things from the original movies and then remembering when they're young kids being friends together. Um, it's definitely like pulls on your heartstrings. Uh, if you love the characters from Train Spotting, you'll probably enjoy this movie. Um, don't bring any high, high expectations. Um, but all in all, it was all right. I, honestly, I'd probably recommend this over the other movies I watched this week. Uh, if, if you've seen Train Spotting, obviously, if you haven't seen Train Spotting, go watch Train Spotting. Unless you're like a recovering addict, then you don't want to watch Train Spotting. But uh, if you have no drug problems, you should definitely watch it because the soundtrack's great. And the soundtrack's great in this one, too. That's one thing. Um, movie wise, it, it's visually great. Audio is great. Soundtrack's great. Um, but yeah, so that's all I watched this week. Four movies. The Mummy. Go see it if you like Tom Cruise movies. Don't expect much. It comes at night. Um, independent, not really scary horror movie that's basically like a character study on how people react um, when the world ends. Rough night, you know, it's kind of a cliche. People get drunk, do drugs, bad things happen, then they have to fix the problems. Um, nothing new at all here. Nothing really like, oh, you know, I can't believe they did that, or nothing really too shocking happens. And then uh, T2, train spotting. It's probably the most enjoyable of the four. Um, like I said, that's the one I'd recommend. All right, uh, I'm going to go and sign off and eat something for supper. But uh, thanks for listening, and you're listening to the All Records podcast. And tune in later for another episode.